She's a, she adopted him when she was 51. She's a single mother. And he's like, he's gonna be four in a week. He was crying. And I said, she said, I just can't believe he did that. And I just took her face in my hands and I said, you need to know that a heart like that from a three-year-old only comes from great parenting. And she just, the tears just came down her face. That's a dead end with the truck rental. Uh, because it was going to be four thousand dollars, and that's if that allowed a thousand dollars for fuel. And my guess is that would have made it. So it was like, I I can't do that just in a truck, and then I'd have to fly back. But there was some confusion in my head because it was like, I've got a truck here in Grand Junction, and that got my attention. And we're going to fill it up, and we're going to go to Western North Carolina to relieve. Uh, for the relief of Hurricane Milton, the truck, and they just decided to deliver it. So until early midweek, this was going to go to North Carolina empty. How this idea originated, and I've gotten to cool. somebody who flew out by the truck and it was going to North Carolina empty. Now it sounds like you guys, well, well practice this. No, we just met on Thursday. Isn't that amazing? I just showed yeah. up. That's the cool part. Three gentlemen fly out about a month ago to purchase the toter home, and they were going to have it delivered. And we said if they could wait until our wedding season's over, we could deliver it. You know, the third week of October. We were just going to make a trip out of it and, trip go, to and go to the beach for a couple days and, and have fun. And and what they're going through. Yeah. And we're supposed to fly home Monday, but if our services are needed that long, we'll stay longer. I, I we have a wedding venue in the backyard. That's our business. Which you can check it out. Play Lake. Yes. So she prayed about it, prayed about it, and then she saw our truck on the news, and she came over and said, "Can I help? Can I get it back up?" But study sail serving. Well, um, I went on two mission trips with uh, just the church uh, in Ensenada to build homes for impoverished families. And I did that two years in a row, 2015 and 2016. And when I came back, um, uh, everything everything always happens at the border crossing. You know, it's like, okay, you need to go back. Okay, now I'm gonna send you far away. And I didn't realize how far away, but the, the organization that we were building the houses with was a YWAM base, Youth with a Mission. And I mean youth. My average team was 24. I was 66. So I had two 18-year-old girls on my team. So um, I came back, and it took me two and a half years to raise the funds to go to the discipleship training. I had to fly to Hawaii, discipleship training. Then I had to fly to New Zealand, and I was on a ship. And uh, then I flew to Papua New Guinea. I was on a ship. And these are medical ships that reach the unpopulated islands of the Pacific area. We have worldwide about 26 ships. And they can be as small as a catamaran or as large as the ships I, work, I was on because of the area. They were icebreakers. All steel, you know, and they had retired them and, and donated them to the YWAM organization. And so when we say steady, sail, and serve, it's because it's a ship's program. And uh, I still have teammates that are out there sailing small vessels to the Fiji Islands, to the Solomon Islands, to uh, uh, Philippines, and then we have one as far in the northeast as north. So that's what that is.